just arrived to the Border Services Agency's building right here in Halifax and uh, I'm just waiting for the shipping agent to to meet me in about five minutes and then we will go through the basically importing the Iveco into Canada uh, it's eight o'clock in the morning uh, it's pretty cold but hopefully things will go smooth okay so that was fairly quick just went into the customs office had a couple of papers stamped and now I'm on my way to the port picking up the truck hopefully they process it if they haven't I might have to wait um, yeah but fingers crossed very exciting I have just arrived in the port and I can see some vans and overlanders cars right in there you might not be able to see it on the camera but uh, I, I cannot see ours to be honest but I will still go of course and I hope it's somewhere there I can see the yellow Iveco but I cannot see ours what I need to do now is I have to present the papers that I got at the customs office at the customs office here and uh, the bill of lading and with that I should be able to pick up our van if it's processed uh, I mean processed through the I guess the import phases of the, the shipping here so let's see what happens but I cannot see the truck okay i'm walking into the port now and i still cannot see my van i still cannot see the evaco but hopefully it's gonna be there i have to go to that green building and they're gonna hand it over to me apparently let's see if it's processed i still don't know this is so exciting i mean i'm walking in the port in uh, halifax and hopefully i'll pick up the the truck, it's, it's very exciting, but it's very... I'm also a bit worried whether they're gonna give it to me now. It's just unbelievable. Let's see. I'm actually allowed to drive away this is absolutely fantastic I cannot believe this I'm ready to cry seriously I can actually drive away I drive out and that's it okay so literally the first minutes with the van and uh, so you can see the plastic sort of plastic isolation that we've done so that nobody can go back into the the living part of the the van but obviously it didn't stop anybody to go in if they wanted to go in they could have but it doesn't look like anybody touched anything so that's all good however the the door doesn't work the lock doesn't work um I haven't opened this part yet this seems to work so this is fine this is what we've done, as you could see it from our other video. Um, now we're just gonna try to, so we're going to fill up the tank and then uh, just organize everything.
horrible, horrible morning, really bad morning. Saying goodbyes to our to our families is really, really a sad part. Even the day is sad. The weather is very sad. We are driving to the airport now. We're going. We're driving. We said goodbye to my family now. My dad and my sister and uh, my nieces, my brother-in-law. Now we're driving to Evelyn's uh, family to say goodbye. And uh, as exciting as the trip is going to be, and we are really looking forward to it. This is the horrible part of it. I just said goodbye to my brother. Oh, it was really tough. I mean, I'm quite sensitive, but we have a really special brother and sister bond, so we are quite close. Yeah, this is always the hardest part. <laughs> traveling for pretty much 20 hours at least and we're quite tired but we had a few few cold ones and uh, so all is good but um, it was interesting to um, explain our trip to the uh, officers at the passport control because when you when you're traveling into a country especially if you fly in you have to have a return flight ticket or the flight ticket traveling uh, forward, which we don't have, so we had to explain that we're waiting for our van and we, we traveling to Alaska and then to the US. So we were put into this special queue to actually explain what we're doing. And obviously, uh, they didn't quite understand in the beginning. And of course, there's a risk always to that you, you're actually going to be turned back and put on a return flight back to your home country, and then you know, it's a whole other mess. But we pulled out our uh, shipping uh, confirmations and even showed pictures of our van and we explained what we're doing and they said, okay, you guys good to go, you know what you're doing. So it's coming from a passport control officer and the Toronto uh, So yeah, so now it's going to be another half an hour until our flight goes to Halifax where we're going to spend about 10 days to wait for our truck to arrive here. Although it hasn't actually left Antwerp yet. Uh.
waiting for the ship to arrive with our van. So we're just trying to kill time in Halifax, so we're doing some walks. And uh, there's this application where we can follow where the ship is, and now it's, uh, it's in Antwerpen, I think, when we checked. So, yeah, fingers crossed it's going to be our schedule, and we can pick it up next week. In the meantime, we're just going around in uh, Halifax, seeing the sights, having good walks, and just waiting. says the 21st so it's not even the 20th anymore there's this website where we can check where the vessel is and uh, it's estimated time of arrival to Halifax and it used to be the 20th of April now it's the 21st of April which is a Thursday well it's a problem because even if it arrives on Thursday we cannot pick it up on Friday I don't think because it's not gonna be that quick so it's probably going to be the 25th, more likely, unless it gets delayed. where we can track the vessel um, says it's the 22nd of April which is really sad I mean we are in Halifax and Nova Scotia Canada it's a very beautiful city very lively lot of young people around we can do many things So originally uh, our van was supposed to arrive on the around the 10th or 11th that's when we flew here as well and then it was gradually pushed back it was first the I think it was the 14th and then just gradually got pushed back to the 20th and then to the 21st and now it's supposed to be the 22nd of April which is Friday so we're probably not going to be able to pick it up on the Friday, especially that it arrives on the evening. And so we are hoping that we're going to pick it up on the 25th of April, which is a Monday. And now is the Monday, the 18th of April. So we really enjoy Halifax. We, we're seeing all the sights, we're doing big walks. It's a beautiful city, very kind people and uh, good bars and pubs. But we are really ready to go. We are really 
ready to leave and then start the actual camping and discovering Canada. Uh, I think we are Halifax out. We went to see the Maritime Museum, the Immigration Museum, the Citadel, and also what, uh, what we, I didn't know, we didn't know, that most of the Titanic's um, victims were buried here. There's a burial ground. Uh, that was very interesting to see. Um, so yeah, just we, we saw everything and we, we just want to move on now. So our car is hasn't arrived yet. Now we have to check out our hotel and move to an Airbnb to stay there for a few days. We are expecting our car to be here on Tuesday. So we probably we have five more days to spend in Halifax. So this is our Airbnb. Website where we could track the the vessel I noticed that it's just outside Halifax so I came out we live really close to this bridge and I came out to watch it and hopefully record it if it's around here I can't see it right now which is weird but the vessel should arrive from that direction and I was expecting it to be already visible but I can't see it is it that one there on the left it can be it's hard to tell from here but it could be turns out I missed it I missed the boat oh well it's in the port now so it's too late now for me to watch it from the bridge I was about half an hour too late. Oh well, at least they are unloading it now, which is good news. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, please. Yeah. So that's my great grandfather who immigrated here. Oh. My great-grandfather immigrated to Canada in the 20s, so almost a hundred years ago. His daughter, my grandmother, told me a lot of uh, stories about him, but since I was really young, I couldn't record every details about him. I only knew that he came to Canada to be a farmer here, to learn a lot about the agriculture, to earn money and uh, go back home and buy a lot of lands and livestock. So I was really curious about his story and yesterday in Halifax we went to the Immigration Museum to find out if they have any information about uh, him, so about my great-grandfather. And it turned out that actually they do have information uh, about him. This is the database they printed out. According to the records, he came here in 1926, so 96 years ago. He was sailing from Antwerp, from Belgium, and he arrived at St. John. He was just 22 years old at this time. He went to uh, Malfort, Saskatchewan, uh, to work at a farm. Our plan is to go to Saskatchewan province, uh, to Malfort, where he worked, according to these records, and see if we can find any more information about him. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, yesterday, when I saw his name uh, on the records, on the screen, I got really emotional because um, my grandmother, so his daughter, told a lot of stories about him and uh, 
just the fact that I cannot share this information with my grandmother anymore just made me really sad. But I'm so glad that he could find him. Here are some news again. We might be able to pick up the truck on Monday. Now it's Friday. So I'm meeting the Kim, the agent, the shipping agent here in Halifax uh, at 8.30 in the morning at customs. And then I'll find out whether they processed the truck already or not. Even if they didn't, I will, I can just uh, show up later that day and hope that uh, I'll be able to pick it up if not, worst case scenario is Tuesday. That's how it looks right now, but we will see. Fingers crossed for Monday.